In this tutorial, we'll be covering how to automate refilling your DAPI sponsor wallet. If you have a DAP using multiple price feeds, we don't want you to worry about running out of funding in any of your feeds. We'll be using Gelato's Automate Ready library to keep your feeds up to date without the worry of receiving stale price feeds, as shown. So let's get started. We're going to start with a blank workspace in Remix. I'm going to create a brand new contract. We're going to call it refill.soul. You can call it anything you like. We're going to start out with a license identifier and a Pragma version. If I type in Pragma, it should autofill. We're going to go with the caret 0.8.9 in this version. The caret just lets the compiler know that we can work with the version 8 branch. We're going to call our contract automation. and we are ready to start building. We will need to import the automate ready.soul from Gelato Library's toolset. This will allow us to monitor and automatically fund our price feed sponsor wallets. You can read more about the details and the best practices in the Gelato docs, but for now, just know that it'll allow us to read our contracts as needed. So we'll just import it here and we'll add our contract as automate ready. And to include this into our contract is Automate ready. This library does require arguments in the constructor. There are two. The automation address in which will be used for our contract to communicate with Gelato's automator. These addresses can be found in the Gelato docs depending on the chain you use. For this example, we're using Polygon Mumbai and we'll be using the automate contract address. The second argument is the task creator. It is the address that will be creating tasks on the Gelato interface. For this example, we'll be using the same EOA wallet that we are deploying the contract with. So let's go ahead and build that. We're going to set up our constructor. And we're going to take in an address. That will be automate. We're going to take in another address. And this will be the task creator. We are now going to pass those arguments to the automate ready constructor. Automate and task creator. And this completes our constructor. Next, we will want a function that will initialize our needs. How many sponsor wallets do we want to keep track of? What is the minimum balance and how much should we fund in case each one goes below minimum balance? Let's create public global variables so we can keep track of each one that we have to input for the initialization. So just above the constructor, we're going to go ahead and create space for these variables. We're going to create an array of addresses for our sponsor wallets. Make those public. I'm going to create a UNT256, make it public, and this will be for our minimum balance. And then we'll have another UNT256 public for our fund amount. Now let's go ahead and initialize our wallet. Our initialize wallet function is just going to set values to these global variables. So let's go ahead and do that. Underneath the constructor, we're just going to make some space. And create a function, initialize wallet. And it's going to take in an address, array, all data, and we'll just call it sponsor wallets, a local variable. And then we're going to have a UN256. We're going to call this one minimum balance. And then another UN256, and we'll call this fund amount. We're going to go ahead and make this public. And then we're going to set our global variables to these local variables. So we're going to set sponsor wallets to sponsor wallets. Minimum balance to minimum balance. 
and fund amount to fund amount. And that's it. Let's create a function that will utilize the Gelato service. We can give it any name we want as we will call this custom function from the Gelato Automate interface. We will call it check sponsor wallet and it'll return two arguments, a Boolean and a bytes. If you look into the docs, you can see all the best practices and samples they have here. Let's build this out. So this function will be called check sponsor wallet. It won't take any arguments. It will be an external as it'll be read from the Gelato interface. It'll be viewed because it doesn't change any states on the EVM and it'll return our two arguments. Our Boolean can execute, can exec, and our bytes, exec payload. We need to set up a few checks and balances to make sure that when the Gelato automation contract reads our contract status, we don't give it any false positives. What we're going to do is create a local variable called unfunded and set that to zero. This will keep track of how many underfunded accounts we have in our contracts. We're also going to set the can exec boolean to false. So if we ever set it true in our function, it will reset back to false when it reads it again. We want to go through all of our sponsor wallets to see if any of them are underbalanced. We're going to create a for loop to check each one on our list. If there are any that are underfunded, we will add it to the total amount of underfunded wallets. So for the for loop, we'll go for uint i equals zero. We'll make sure i is less than the sponsor wallets dot length and i plus plus. We'll create an if statement if the sponsor wallet at position i balance is less than the minimum balance, then we're going to go ahead and add an additional underfunded wallet to our list. So unfunded to unfunded plus one. Now that we have the total amount of underfunded sponsor wallets, we will create a temporary address array with the size of the unfunded wallets. We will say address array memory. We'll call it unfunded sponsor wallets. And we'll create a new address. And it will be the size of the unfunded wallets. Now we need to loop through the sponsor wallets again and build a brand new list with just the array of addresses with underfunded wallets. So what we're going to do is create a brand new counter. We'll create uint counter equals zero. And we'll create a brand new for loop. We'll go for uint j equals zero. We will loop through the length of the sponsor wallets. J plus plus. And then we're going to check if the sponsor wallets at position J balance is less than the minimum balance. The difference here is, is we're going to put the address of the sponsor wallets at position J in our new array. So the unfunded sponsor wallets at position counter, which is zero currently, will then absorb the sponsor wallet at position J. If this happens, we're going to increase the counter to counter plus one. So then we're going to base our new array with all the underfunded sponsor wallets. Now that we have a complete array of all the wallets that need funding, we have to let the Gelato automation know what to do. Here we're going to need to configure our exec payload argument. 
it is of type sprites, so we'll have to encode it with our ABI encode with signature. Let's go ahead and make some space, get that within the function, and we're going to pop in our exec payload, and we're going to set that equal to ABI dot encode with signer. Now it's looking for the signature string. What goes into this string is the function name that we want to call. While we haven't made it just yet, we know that we're going to call it fund sponsor wallet. It's going to take in the array of addresses that need funding and the fund amount. So let's go ahead and fill that in. So it's going to be a string fund sponsor wallet. And again, it's going to take in that address of array and a UN 256 for the fund amount. Okay. And then the arguments that are going to pass through it is the unfunded sponsored wallets. And then we know we have to fill it in with the fund amount. Excellent. So now we have completed our exec payload. The last piece of this function is to check if we can actually execute this transaction or not. So what we're going to do is create an if statement to check to see if there's any addresses in the unfunded sponsored wallet list. If it has a length greater than zero, then we'll set it to true. If not, then we'll just leave it as a false. So let's go ahead and do that. Make a little bit of space again. If unfunded sponsored wallets dot length is greater than zero, that means we have an address in the list. We're going to change can exec to true. If not, it will stay false. And this completes our function. Now we can create the function that the Gelato Automation will call to send the funds to our sponsor wallets. We will call this function fund sponsor wallet and it'll take two arguments. It will take the array of the unfunded sponsor wallets, call data, unfunded sponsor wallets, and it will also take our amount to fund. This will be external because it'll be called by the Gelato Automation tool. It'll also be payable. It will also return a Boolean to let us know if the transfer was a success or not. One thing to note about this function is we want to set a limit of who can call this function. We can't put only owner on this because we're not the ones that are going to be calling this function. The Gelato Automation is. Within the library of the Gelato Automation, we had a modifier that limits this. It is called only dedicated message sender that is included with our import. So we're going to go ahead and add this to our function. So we're going to go in here and put in only dedicated message sender and close that function. And now we have this modifier that will limit the callers. Let's go ahead and close our function. And now we're going to do a for loop to go through the unfunded sponsor wallets. And then we're going to do a secondary check to make sure that the unfunded sponsor wallets meet the requirements of being underbalanced. So let's go ahead and create it. So for uint i equals zero, we're going to make sure i is less than the unfunded sponsor wallets dot length and i plus plus. And then we're going to check the conditions to make sure that if the unfunded sponsor wallets at position I balance is less than the minimum balance. If this is true, then we're going to go ahead and set a call function to send a payment to the contract address. So we're going to go ahead and go success. And we're going to set that equal to payable. And it's going to be the unfunded sponsor wallet at position I. And we're going to go ahead and call the value of the amount. And then close that off. And there, we'll go through the entire address list, make sure that the balances are correct, 
And if they are underbalanced, then we will send the gas payment. We are setting up our contract to also pay the cost of the Gelato automation transaction from the funds we will load in this contract. Here are the notes in the Gelato docs about this feature. In short, we're going to be using get fee details. It's going to return us the fee of the transaction and the type of token that we need to pay for that transaction. For our case, we are deploying on Polygon Mumbai, so we'll be using Matic. So let's go ahead and add this in there. So just underneath our for function, we are going to go ahead and go get fee details. It's going to return us the UN 256 fee and the address of the fee token. Then we're going to call in the transfer function that's built into the library. And we're going to send the fee and the fee token. It already fills it for us with a slight adjustment. In order for our contract to be able to receive any type of gas token, we have to create a receive function. We'll make some space. We will call it receive. It'll have no arguments. It'll be external and payable. And we'll close that function. And that's all we need to do to receive the native token in gas. In this final function, we want the ability to pull out the funding from the contract if we no longer want to keep the upkeep of our sponsor wallets. We will call it withdraw funds. It will not take in any arguments. It'll be external and it'll return a Boolean success. It'll have the same call as our payable. So we're going to have success. And we're going to set a payable to us, the message sender. And we're going to call the value of the address of this contract and the total balance of the contract. We'll go ahead and close that off. And that's it. One thing I want to draw attention to is the ability for anybody to call this withdraw funds function. That means anybody can drain our contract at any time. We're going to import the opens up an ownable library. That way we can use the only owner modifier for our contracts. So we're just going to go ahead and add it's ownable. And now we can use the only owner modifier in our functions. So we're going to go ahead and add here. Owner. One other function we want to put limits on as well is our initialized wallet. We want to be able to limit the amount that people will use this. So we're going to go ahead and go only owner. And that way we can put limitations on who calls these functions. Okay, we are ready to deploy. Okay, we're going to head over to the compiler. Make sure that everything is compiling correctly. We are using 8.18 at the time of this tutorial. We have support for that because we're using the caret, so we know we can use version 8 for this. I'm going to go ahead and compile it one more time just to make sure everything's looking good. And it looks good. We're going to go over to our deployer. And we're going to make sure that we're drop down menu is going to have our injected connector. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you'll see that I'm on custom network Polygon Mumbai with my wallet address. We're going to make sure that I go down and pick the right contract. So we're on refill.sol. That is the correct one. And we're ready to deploy. It does require two arguments in the constructor, the automate address and the task creator. The task creator is pretty easy. It is our deployer address. So we're going to go ahead and use that same address. And then for the automate address, we're going to go over to the docs. We're going to scroll down into the contract addresses and in Polygon Mumbai, we're going to get the automate address. I'm going to go ahead and grab that, bring it back and paste it down. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and deploy this contract. We're going to verify the transaction. And it looks like we're good to go. 
If we go down to the contract list and expand it, we can see all the details of our contract. The next thing we want to do is supply our contract with some gas funds. We're going to send one Matic just to keep things easy. We're going to grab our contract address and we're going to send that with our MetaMask. Once our transaction has confirmed, you'll see that our balance has been updated. We now need to initialize our contract with the addresses of the sponsor wallets that we want to monitor and the minimum balance that we want to fund it with. So in our initialize wallet function, you'll see that we'll take in an array of addresses of sponsor wallets, the minimum balance that we want to keep in each one of those wallets, and the fund amount that we want to fund with them. You'll want to head over to api3.org. On the landing page, you'll see the link for the API3 market. Go ahead and click that. Here you're gonna see the list of all the tokens and the networks that they're available on. Here we're just gonna click on Aave USD. We're gonna go ahead and drop down to the network of our choice. Scroll all the way down to Polygon Mumbai. And in order to see our addresses, we're gonna to have to connect our wallet. And then do not get confused with the address that we're going to use. This is the proxy address. In order to find the funding contract address, we're actually going to have to go to fund gas and grab the contract address here. This is the wallet we want to fund. To save time, I've already gone ahead and went through price feeds to see which ones were just below my gas example. Right now we have Algo USD at 4.9 Matic. And here we have Cardano at 4.8 Matic. I'm going to set a minimum gas of 5 Matic. So when we monitor the function, it will fund the gas for both objects. So let's go ahead and grab these addresses. First, we're gonna grab Cardano. I'm gonna hit fund gas. I'm gonna grab the contract address. I'm gonna head back to Remix. I'm gonna make sure I put in my array. And for this example, we're gonna need quotations. I'm gonna to paste that down, quotation, comma. I'm gonna make a space. And then I'm gonna head back to Algo. I'm gonna hit fund gas. I'm gonna grab this contract address. I'm going to go back to Remix, put my quotations again, paste it down, and push it back in. Here I should have my closing bracket. I want to have the minimum balance of 5 Matic, but remember we have 18 trailing zeros, so we're going to go 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now for the fund amount. They were both just below 5, so I just want to send about 0.2 to make sure that everything goes over the top. So 0 0.2 would be 2 with 17 zeros. So we're going to go 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now we are ready to transact. So let's go ahead and deploy this transaction. And we are now initialized. In our final step, we're going to want to set up the Gelato Automation Interface. We're going to want to head over to app.gelato.network. You're going to go ahead and connect your wallet. You're going to want to make sure the network is the correct network you want to function on. And we want to make sure that our wallet is the same wallet that we deployed our contract with. We're going to go ahead and create task. And it's going to ask us for our contract address. We're going to head over to Remix. We're going to go to our deployer. And we're going to copy our address. We're going to go ahead and paste that down. Because it's not verified on chain, we're going to need to grab the ABI as well. We'll go back to Remix, go back to our compiler, and we're going to grab the ABI right here and go back and paste that down. Now it's asking what function does it want to execute. We're going to go ahead and drop down and we're going to click on Fun Sponsor Wallet. That's the one we want to execute. It's going to ask us if we have predefined inputs, but we're going to use our resolver. Remember that the resolver will have the limitations, but we do have our modifier, our only dedicated message sender, so we are okay. Now it's going to ask when do we want the transaction to run. It can check any contract, but for our example, we have the condition in the same contract. So we're going to go back to Remix. We're going to grab that contract address. We'll go back, paste that down. We have to grab the ABI again, so we're going to go back to the compiler, grab the ABI, go back, paste that down. This time we have to decide which function is going to check the status. 
So we're going to go drop down. And this one, we're going to check sponsor wallet. Now it's going to ask us how we would like to pay for the transaction. One, we can load a gelato balance in the front end and pre-deposit. Or two, the way we set it up, where the transaction pays for itself. It now knows that we are in Polygon Mumbai, so it's going to be using Matic. Then we're going to give it a task name. We'll call it Fund Sponsor Wallet, but you can call it anything you want. And we're going to go ahead and create that task. It's going to require a signature and a transaction. And we now have a transaction. We can see all the details of our automation. Let's go back. And now it's ongoing. We're going to go back to Remix. We're going to check the status of our deployment. I'm going to go ahead and turn on another screen. That way we can watch the price feed as it goes. So currently my balance is one ETH. And on the main page, we see that the gas is just below five Matic. And we are going to wait for that to update. And there we have it. We see that the contract has sent the transaction. And shortly it'll update the gas. And now you see that our gas has been updated on both Cardano and the Algo proxy contracts. And this is how you can keep your D APIs up to date without worrying about getting any stale price feeds or running out of gas. Thank you for checking us out.